Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today, you know what it is, we're in my pretty garage. Today is DIY Wednesday. Yes, and what are we DIYing today? Well, I'm super excited about it and I, I, I can barely contain myself. We are DIYing a Starbucks patio set. Ah, ah. I'm super, super excited. And you're like, well, what the fuck, Sherry? How did you get a Starbucks patio set? And what makes you think I have access to a Starbucks patio set? Well, I know this. I super lucked out because I have a coworker whose wife is like a district manager or something, I don't know, something high up in the Starbucks world. He sent me a text message saying that a Starbucks in town was going through a remodel and they were getting rid of all of their furniture for free. And he said, bring your truck, get there at two, it's first come first serve. So I zoomed over and believe me, this is a whole nother story. I don't know, I get it. Oh, you want free stuff, I totally get it. Who doesn't want free stuff? However, when you bring two or three trucks and you just start loading everything you can get your hands on, I know for a fact you're not using all of that Starbucks furniture that you just loaded in your three trucks. I know you're not taking that home and refinishing it and putting it in your backyard and doing like a little mini Starbucks in your backyard. I know you're taking that shit to the swap meet and you're selling it, which I think is completely unfair for those like me who literally got there at one minute after two and barely had a choice of anything. I mean, I really wanted like the cute little round tables. Oh no, they have like 22 of them in the bed of their truck. What are they gonna do with 22 round Starbucks tables? Really, really? You know who you are with your three truckloads of Starbucks stuff that you sold at the swap meet. Anyways, I just feel like yeah, I get you might want to make a little bit of money, but what about those of us who actually really want to use the Starbucks furniture in our own homes? What about what about us? I can't be too complaining about it because I did get a Starbucks patio table and four chairs, which we're going to redo. I love the Starbucks. So when I found out that I could have a piece of Starbucks in my house, I was really excited about it. So I wanna refinish it and I'm actually gonna refinish it completely different. Like people will be like, no one's gonna know it's a Starbucks table. Oh, you just wait, I have something in store. I know you all may not have a coworker who has a spouse that's a higher up at the Starbucks that could give you the inside scoop on when the Starbucks in your town is gonna remodel so that you can go get free furniture. I know this, but you can redo any outdoor patio for spring that you find. Maybe you find something on the side of the road. Maybe you find something in an antique store. Maybe you find something at the Goodwill. Or, boom, I did some research for you. Maybe you go online and you go on Craigslist or whatever you may have, let go. Oh my gosh, this says vintage wrought iron patio set. It says zero dollars, so it's four chairs and this table has metal on the outside and a glass top, so if you wanted to refinish it, paper off and tape off the glass top so you don't get any spray paint on it. There are cheapy used patio tables with chairs out in the world. You may not be able to get them for free, but you will get them for dirt cheap and then you can refinish them. So, it doesn't have to be a Starbucks table. I mean, you're probably not as lucky as me, but this is a good project to get ready for spring and once it's done, it's gonna look amazing. And really, depending on how much you pay for your patio table, maybe you have one in your backyard that you just let go to shit and you just wanna redo it. All it's gonna cost you is the cost of spray paint. This table is pretty GD beat up. It's been at the Starbucks for I don't know how long. It also has this wonderful no smoking sticker on it that we need to get off. And it has all these dings and, and whatnots. Before we even begin spray painting, which I bought a shit ton of spray paint. One can of spray paint. I got two cans of spray paint. I got three cans of spray paint. Oh, four. Oh, five. Six. Seven, eight. One per each chair, so that takes four. Two for the table, and then I figured two extra, just in case. 
I did get Rust-Oleum two times ultra cover in orange. Orange is my favorite color and I have a lot of orange stuff in my backyard already. Keeping with that theme, I'm going orange. The chairs don't look super shitty like the table does, so I might just clean the chairs off. There's like bird poop on them. But for the table, we gotta sand this because we can't spray paint over all these nicks because they'll show up. I have my sander, you know, my favorite palm sander, not sponsored by Black & Decker. I'm just gonna start sanding this smooth. Oh, I can peel this off. This literally is just a sticker. Oh man, it's not that peelable. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Jeez Louise, that has some sticky ass sticker stuff. Uh, oh, oh, finally. So step one in refinishing this metal Starbucks patio set is prep. The better we prep it, the smoother our paint will go on. So I'm just gonna sand it, easy as that. So I've sanded the top of the table and I also kind of laid it on its side and I did the feet because those were really dinged up. I did not sand the legs because the legs look okay to me. I just feel like I could spray over these and they'll be fine. I did notice that under the table, the base, there's a nut missing here and a nut missing here. I don't know if I have any nuts in my cabinet or not, but I'll look and I mean, that's like the last of my worries. Now I'm going to like wash off the top because this black paint is messy. I don't know for sure if I will have to go over it again once I wash it off. But what I did come to the conclusion of as I was sanding this table, People at Starbucks need to be more respectful of the Starbucks patio furniture because this was dinged up so bad. There's no reason for that. Have a little bit more respect, people. That's all. Okay, I'm gonna go get a rag and I'm gonna wipe this down and wipe the chairs down and then we'll see if I have any more prep work to do after that. It was getting hot, so I took my sweatshirt off. But I have wiped down all of the chairs and the table. And the chairs ended up looking pretty good after I had cleaned off all the bird poo. There are some scratches on the chairs, but they're not deep enough to where I feel that the spray paint won't cover them nicely. I wiped down the table, I'm running my hand over it, and I think I'm gonna have to sand it one more time because I can feel that gouge. I don't know what the people were doing at the Starbucks. While you could be like, fuck it, it's good enough, I'm spray painting it. And it would turn out probably fine. I am trying to make this as smooth as possible. While I'm taking a little more time in the prep work, I'm hoping that saves me time in the spray painting work. That's why I'm gonna sand it one more time. Okay, the sanding's done. Don't ask me what happened. I think I went into sanding blindness because what? It's a silver fucking table now. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It was very easy to do. I was just using 80 grit sandpaper and it was like the more I was sanding, the more I noticed like nicks and scratches and unsmooth surfaces. So, I don't know. I got in this weird sanding trance. The vibrations of my palm sander just took over and I just kept sanding. But guess what? Table's fucking smooth now. So the orange spray paint is gonna take to it like something that takes to something real good. So what I'm gonna do is because there's sanding particles everywhere, I'm gonna sweep and I'm gonna lay down a sheet. We all know it is not to protect my garage floor since I took <laughs> such care in sanding this sucker. I don't want any weird dust things flying on my spray paint. So I'm gonna prep my spray painting area and then we'll get to painting. Okay, so I have swept the floor and I've laid down a sheet and I went in the house and I got these Clorox dusters. I actually really like these just for dusting your house. Well, pro tip. They have a little bit of a tack 
to them. I know I was sanding and I was sweeping and I wiped everything down already, but I think that I'm gonna go over everything again with this like tacky duster before I start painting. Yeah, look at that, look at it. And I wiped them down already. Then we're gonna start spray painting, yay. Okay, we're dust free and it's everybody's favorite part of DIY Wednesday. Will Sherry be able to get the uh, paint lid off of the spray paint can? Any bets? I mean, the directions are squeeze and pull. That's it. And then there's a picture of a hand that's barely squeezing this area. <gasps> Holy shit! That was not planned! I did it! Uh, that's a good sign. That means this spray paint's gonna go on so good. I contemplated doing a primer first. This is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Paint Plus Primer. So I don't need to prime it. And plus we sanded this shit smooth, so I'm not worried about it. This is a gloss real orange and it's for metal, wood, plastic, and more. It also says double the coverage. One spray paint can equals two spray paint cans. So that's good. So here we go. We're just gonna start spray painting. Yay. Okay, quick note. If you watched Galvanized Planter Bucket Pot DIY, you know how I was spraying really close to get that desired metal effect. And I said in that DIY video, typically they do not tell you to do that when you're spray painting like furniture. We're not gonna do that here. We're gonna do shwoom. Swoop, nice even strokes, semi farish away, so everything is smooth. We're gonna start off of the project and finish off of the project and just go back and forth, nice and smooth. Okay, here we go. I'm loving it already. Okay, here's what I'm wondering. I know we don't have any coverage on this at all, but those little areas of black that I didn't sand off all the way, are those gonna show through? Rustoleum, you're telling me this is ultra cover. You better ultra cover this shit. That's all I have to say. Spray paint can number one, dust. I've gotten the tabletop one good coat. I can still see some of the black coming through, but I'm sure that will get taken care of with coat number two. And I've also gotten almost all of the legs done. I'm gonna need to flip the table when it dries so I can get the underneath of the legs, but so far the table's looking pretty good. So while that dries, I am going to start on the chairs. Yay. Let's see if this one goes as good as the first one. Okay, I'm gonna do just what, just what the lid said. Pinch here, and it shows a hand lightly squeezing. Nope, I knew it was too good to be true. And it shows a hand lightly squeezing. Nope, and it shows a hand. Oh, okay, yay. All right, let's start a chair. I'm contemplating doing the undersides of the chair first which I should have done on the table, but I wasn't thinking because I was just so excited to spray orange on the top. So I'm gonna do that for the chairs. Okay, here we go. So I just opened up my fourth can of spray paint to finish off the bottom of the fourth chair. So it took me three and let's say a quarter cans of spray paint to do all of the undersides of four chairs and the first coat on the table. Also, I make the mistakes so you won't. Painting the legs, you want to get extra close because when you're far away you just feel like you're losing a lot of spray paint. It's just going into the air. But the closer you get on these little skinny old legs, the more chances you have to drip paint. As bad as you want to get in close, don't do it. Your spray paint is going to drip. It goes on way too thick. So keep your distance, spray far, even though you see a lot of spray paint not hitting anything, stay far away from those legs. I keep saying that to myself, but yet I keep going in close and then I go, holy shit, there's a huge paint drip. 
Once those dry, I'm gonna lightly go over it with sandpaper so that I don't have such a huge drip when I do the final coat. So I'm gonna wait for these to dry. I'm gonna drink some Starbucks, flip everything over, and then go back in with another coat. So I flipped everything. I'm gonna paint the underside of the table, flip it back over, do final coat, final coats on the chairs, the part you sit on, and no, no, this isn't just a let's spray paint a table DIY. I know, you get how to spray paint things. This is just step one in the overall transformation. Don't you worry. I have other fun things that we're gonna do to this table to even make it look more spectacular than the orange spray paint table. Okay. <laughs> I'm videoing. Okay, so I have done the underside legs of the table and orange spray paint is fucking everywhere. My sheet that I have on my floor, I am sticking to like a crazy person. I'm gonna get all the spray paint done and then we're going to kick it up a notch. There's a piece de resistance that we're gonna add to the tabletop that I'm not gonna tell you about right now because I want it to be a giant surprise. So. Let me continue to breathe in the paint fumes, finish spray painting everything, and then we'll start the other shit that I just said a second ago. The sad news is that's my last can of spray paint. That is eight cans of spray paint that I have used from a distance Everything might look like it's completely covered. Just went around and I saw some spots that need additional coverage. My entire garage is fucking orange. There's an orange hue over everything. Palm sander, orange. Cords, orange. Cement, orange. Sheets, orange. Everything is fucking orange. If no one looked at this with a very close eye, you could call it done. You really could call it done. I mean, this is a lot of furniture. <laughs> the front and the backs and the slats and the arms and the table and everything. So right now, I think I'm into it for 40 bucks. I am loving it. We might be able to tell a little bit better once everything is completely dry and I can touch it and turn it over and make sure no like glaring black spots are coming through. I'm most likely gonna get two more orange cans of spray paint. I'm orange, everything's orange. And I think I almost can't see what is missing because it's just fucking orange in here. Like, I love orange, but come on, seriously. I'd say it's pretty good. I'm loving the way it looks. I mean, the orange is looking fucking fabulous. Like, I love it. And I can't wait to see it, like, in the sunlight, especially with all the other details, and then a special surprise. So, yeah, let's let this dry, and then we'll evaluate. Maybe we'll call it enough, or we'll call it two more cans of spray paint. But on the plus side, guess who's a fucking pro at taking off spray can lids? Me, I am. It only took an eight spray can lids to get me to be a pro, but I finally figured it out. That's a plus. All right, let's let this shit dry. Okay, and just cause I think it's funny and this is real life and I think that you might think that I'm being dramatic when I say everything in my garage is fucking orange. I'm gonna show you just how orange my garage is. We'll just slow pan. Oh, you start to see faint orange. Oh shit, she's getting real orange. <laughs> It's so fucking orange in my garage. Oh my god, seriously. Shit's orange. I wasn't exaggerating. Look at my extension cords, my palm sander, everything is fucking orange. So be prepared for that. But look at how good the table and chairs look. Everything is completely dry. Don't worry, because the orange garage is kind of no more. All the overspray was just a fine like dusting of powder. Once I cleaned everything up, I swept the garage and voila, it's back to normal with just its other paint stains. So don't worry about that. You can paint in your garage, it'll sweep right up. Or you can just put down more drop cloths than I have and you won't have to worry about it at all. But anyways, Everything is dry and it's looking pretty good. There are some things that I need to touch up, like, <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I see some black showing through. Not super concerned with the underneath, I just did a light coating. I did not want to waste my spray paint under here. 
So now that everything is dry and I've looked at it and I know that I need to touch up some stuff, I also think that while the top of the table looks really nice, from certain angles, I see that it's not super smooth. You know, like little fuzzes or something got dried up in there. So it could use another coat, in my opinion. So what did I do? I went to the Home Depot and I bought more spray paint. I just bought two cans of orange, so I've already used eight. And then I got some, because you know I only had 80 grit sandpaper in my cupboard. 320, extra fine. So I could just lightly sand the top of the table before I put another coat on. I am not gonna sand the chairs. Those are just getting touched up and I'm calling that a day. Then I also got a gloss clear coat for the top of the table only because I have a special surprise for the top of the table, like I mentioned. There's a surprise. This shit isn't just gonna be orange. So what I need to do is open up this extra fine 320 grit sandpaper. I'm actually gonna do it by hand, nice and light, because I just wanna smooth out the little tiny baby bumps that I feel on the top of the table so that I can put a nice, clean coat of orange on it. I don't like working in these eight and a half by 11 sheets, so I always fold them in half, rip them, fold that half in half, rip that so that I have just a nice rectangle of sandpaper that fits nicely in my hand and I don't waste anything. I'm gonna go all the same direction, just nice and light, just nice and light, just barely scratching the surface. Oh, it feels 10 times better already. My goodness gracious, what a difference. This is also gonna make it so that your final beautiful coat has something to stick to. I like sanding in between layers of spray paint is always good practice. I'm not gonna say I do it every time because I cut corners like nobody's in business, but for something like this that I've spent damn near 50 bucks on spray paint, I kind of want to make it look nice. Plus, I want it to last. I don't want to be re-spray painting this every time summer comes around. Looks good, feels good. Now, I need to wipe it down, get all the dust off, and then I can spray the final coat. Okay, so I just went around and touched up all the chairs. On some of the chairs, I was like, damn, Sherry, were you not paying attention because like this whole back leg is still black. I don't know if it was just I was colorblind by orange, but it's a good thing that I went and fine inspected all of the chairs because there were a lot of black patches. Oh, and BT Dub, this is my second can of spray paint. Both lids came off like butter. Yay me. Okay, I'm gonna do the top of the table, my final coat. Here we go. So I'm basically just trying to get a light, even, smooth coat so I don't have to touch this table again. Making sure all my edges and corners are covered. Yeah, I say we're good. I am loving the orange. It's looking pretty money. So let's let this dry. Okay, so the final coat on the tabletop is dry. I mean, we could just leave this table and chairs as is because they look amazing. If you decide that you want to refinish some patio furniture, pick whatever color you want. You could do a bright yellow. You could go white. Go with whatever's in your backyard. I like pops of color in my backyard. The spray paint on the metal, bomb. I love it. They look good. They look crisp, but they look brand new. It did take a lot of spray paint, as you know, 10 cans, but table and four chairs was completely free to me. And maybe you have one on hand that you just want to redo that would be completely free to you. So I bought 10 cans at $5 a pop. So that's $50. $50 for a brand new table and chairs, I think is pretty amazing. Like I said, we could leave it like this. We could just pop it in our backyard. Boom, boom, done. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take it a step further. So I'm going to once again, I know you're like, what? Don't touch it, it's perfect. I am gonna lightly sand it because of what I want to do on the top. And I did get a clear protector coat that I am gonna spray over the tabletop only once I'm done with the secret surprise. So I'm gonna lightly sand this light the sand, the tabletop, and then I'm gonna show you the secret surprise. I can't wait. Final coat, sanded, tabletop, smooth. It looks good. 
but we're gonna make it look even better. What is this big white square of paper sitting on the table, you ask? This white square of paper is gonna kick this table up a notch. I happen to have a very good friend. He owns a soccer shop and he has a vinyl cutter, somewhat similar to an at-home cricket machine. You know that I got this table for free at the Starbucks and I love the Starbucks. So what did I do? Oh, I just have a big vinyl Starbucks logo that I'm gonna put on this table. I know you're sitting there going, thanks a fucking lot, Sherry, because you made me sit through this entire DIY. Number one, I didn't get a free Starbucks table. Number two, I don't have a friend named David who has a giant vinyl cutter that can put me out a vinyl sticker that I can stick onto the table. I know it. And it does seem fucked up of me to do a project like this where you're like, these things are not readily available to me, lady. However, I already proved to you that on Craigslist, you could find patio furniture very, very cheap. And I've also stated you might have a neighbor or you might have some in your backyard that just needs a fresh coat of paint. Everything that we've done up to this point applies to those two things. As far as a vinyl sticker goes, number one, you don't have to do anything table's perfect as is. Number two, you may not have a person that has a vinyl sticker maker, but that doesn't mean that you can't spruce up the top of your table by getting a stencil and stenciling something directly on the top. If you're really artistic, you could freehand something on the top. You don't have to do something as jumbo as me, and maybe you do have a Cricut machine and you want to do something in just the corners, maybe a little flourish or what not in the corners of the table. There are things that you can do to make your DIY patio table your very own. These things are just tips because I'll tell you what, have I ever put a gigantic vinyl sticker on anything? No, and I'm really nervous about it. But kind of like with all these DIYs, this is real life. We learn as we go. I had an idea in my head and I'm gonna just try to make it happen. So what I do know is my friend David told me before I put it on, we take a scraper, which I have, and just make sure that all of the sticker part, and I can see through this white paper, I can see where the logo is, make sure that that is all down and stuck because apparently when we peel away one of the papers, we don't want the stickers to lift off. I am really nervous because unlike paint, stenciling that's very forgiving because if you mess up on your paint stencil you could just repaint over it get another can of orange spray paint sand it sand off your crap stencil that you did repaint it if i mess up this sticker it's the only sticker i have and it's on my table i mean i'm assuming it's really sticky how easy is it to peel off if i mess it up i don't know i mean we're not gonna mess it up <laughs> who am i kidding we're perfect everything we do is money we're not gonna mess this up, it's gonna be beautiful. I actually had my friend John format it for me exactly the way I wanted, because I didn't wanna do the whole round Starbucks logo like in the center of the table. I wanted to just do a portion of the Starbucks logo off one corner of the table. So there's two papers. This top loosey goosey paper is the piece of paper that has the sticker on it in reverse. So this top paper is the paper that lays down on the table and then we press it all down really good and then we peel away the top paper. I'm just, this is such a big fucking piece. Like, what was I thinking? How am I gonna lay this down totally straight? Okay. Okay. <sighs> Pretend this was right side because it's backwards because it's supposed to be flipped. How am I gonna line that up? Like, I don't know how forgiving this paper is. Like, when I put it down, can I take it up if I don't like it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I line up? <gasps> oh my God, okay. It would be easiest if I lined up the edges with the edges of the table and didn't try to make it roll over the edge, right? <gasps> I got an idea. <laughs> Rewind. This is probably what you're supposed to do. For all of you who have done this before, you're probably yelling at me going, don't peel off the entire paper yet. And I'm gonna put this back on here. Now I'm gonna line it up. And then as I line it up, I'm gonna peel it back. Trials, just trial and error, trial and error. This is very hard. You know what, vinyl makers? You need to make this paper a little bit more see-through. So it's like rolling all down my chest. My brow is sweaty. This was a hard idea, Sherry. Okay, this side might be good. Although I know you're looking at it and going, that looks as wrinkly as fuck. But that's what I had to do. That's what I had to do. That's what I had to do to get it all lined up. 
So now that I feel like I have the side secure, I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back up. Okay, let's sneak you back this way. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yeah, I'm just going for it. So for the most part, the Starbucks is on nice. So I'm gonna take my scraper and I'm gonna scraper this because I don't feel like I need to move it at all. Let's just peel this up. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it looks so good. Oop. She lost an eye. That's why you got a squeegee squeegee. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, okay, she's messed up. We gotta fix her, but you get the gist of how fucking cute this looks. Oh my God. Okay, so I gotta fix some of these wrinkles. I'm just gonna pick one up, unwrinkle it, lay it back down. That's my plan. Yep, perfect. So I'm gonna go around and fix the little wrinkle spots, press her on down, and then show it to you. Oh damn, she looks good. And it wasn't as hard. The vinyl is a little bit more forgiving than I thought. As long as you don't have it super squeegee down, it's not that super sticky to the table. You can remove it and readjust it. So I got a scrap piece of paper and I did this so I could be really firm and make sure there were no air bubbles and I didn't risk jabbing the vinyl. My friend David, who cut this vinyl for me, said that this is weatherproof, but he does suggest putting a clear coat over it. But now you wanna know what I'm nervous about? What if the clear coat looks up the vinyl? It should have a clear coat, especially since I sand at the top, it needs a clear coat. You know, I just don't want the vinyl, like the spray paint to hit it and the vinyl to like shrink up or seize up or bubble up or something, because I have it so effing perfect right now. I have to, I have to protect this, right? Again, even if you don't have a person who can cut you some vinyl, you could easily stencil on top of your table if you wanted to add some flair. Let me regroup for a second, think about that clear coat. I'll be right back. So, I phoned a friend as well as Googled it. Everyone tells me that you can clear coat vinyl and it's not gonna be a problem. I did get the Rust-Oleum clear gloss wood, metal, plastic, and more. So, we're gonna do it. We're gonna hope for the best. Look at this, watch this. Ready, go. Son of a bitch. Ah, sookie sookie. All right. Let's clear coat this bitch. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so the Starbucks table is finally done. It's dry, everything's looking good. Are you ready for the final reveal? Oh, holy shit. Look at how amazing this table looks. I cannot get over it. It is awesome. Just like everything we do, totally money. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just sitting at my newly refinished, amazing Starbucks table, completely custom that I made myself. When all is said and done, this project took probably a day and a half. A lot of that was watching paint dry. It wasn't that difficult. As you saw, the most difficult part was um, actually putting on this decal. When all is said and done, my only cost was spray paint, and I bought a shit ton of it. I used 10 cans of orange on the one table and the four chairs, and I bought one clear coat for the table top. With tax and everything, the spray paint cost me $57. That's a lot on spray paint, I have to say, but the end result is amazing. And depending on the table that you're going to refinish, you may buy more or less cans of spray paint. Um, you might get a little bistro table that only has two chairs. Maybe you'll use six cans of spray paint. Again, I know damn, that's an amazing project, I wanna do it, but I didn't get a free Starbucks table and I don't have a guy who can do me a decal. That's okay, 
This is just to get those brain juices flowing. You don't have to use a decal. The decal is actually hard. There's many, 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 many options that you can do when refinishing an outdoor metal patio table. I'm super stoked with how this table turned out. I took a picture of it and I showed it to my friend at work who gave me the hot tip on the free Starbucks furniture. He sent it directly to his wife who is, you know, the higher up. I don't know if she's a district manager or whatever. He came over to my desk later and he was like, how did you do this? My wife wants to do this. I inspired one person at least. Point of the story is refinish a metal patio table. What have you got to lose? If you can find one on Craigslist, if you have one in your backyard that's just beat up, check your thrift stores, see what you can come up with. I feel like we all can use extra seating in our backyard. It's getting warm out, it's barbecue time, you're gonna have friends over. When my friends come over, they're gonna think they're at a very luxurious Starbucks, but they're not, they're in my backyard. And guess what? You think this is the last you're gonna see of this table? Oh no, no, no. I've got more shit planned for this. This was just part one. You guys don't even know what you're in store for. We're gonna do a part two. What else can she do to this table? What does she have planned? She's a crazy DIYer. Leave well enough alone, lady, move on. No, I have something else planned. We're gonna do a part two on this table and I'm gonna take it up light years, light years, you'll see. So make sure you ring that notification bell because you're not gonna wanna miss it. All right, everybody. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.